Yes. Okay, so before I begin, I'd just like to thank my advisors, um, Mr. Stephen McAlpine with the video camera over there, um, uh, Mr. James Sandoz and Mr. Eric Anderson, who could not be here today. Um, I'd also like to thank my fan club over there um, for showing up, uh, former IABF student and Amanda People as well. Um, okay. Okay, I'm first going to start off, uh, I'm going to do a series of two jumps. Um, what I want you guys to focus on mainly are how my hips look, my knees, my ankles, and then when I'm, doing, when I'm done doing these two jumps, I want you guys to tell me the differences. Okay. So jump number one. Okay. Jump number two. Can anybody tell me some differences they see? The way you landed? Mm -hmm. yeah. This one. <laughs> the second one you need one. And the second one, yep. Anything else? It's a lot more balanced in the first one. Like, was steady or something? Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> Anything else? Kind of absorbed. You jump, you know, wherever you landed, you absorbed all the force of your body. Yeah, very good. Okay. These are some of the major differences that you'll see between female and male athletes. Males tend to jump uh, like my first one. They're in a more uh, flex knee angle when they land. Um, it's like a softer landing. Uh, they absorb the shock better than females. Uh, the second one is uh, what represents females, and their knees tend to be uh, kind of like knock knees when they land, which puts pressure on their ACL, which increases the risk of injury. So that's what um, my research was about. I did a multidisciplinary research um, about how the causes of ACL tears are kind of found. So the problem. Um, from the Journal of Sports Medicine that we see that about 10,000 serious knee injuries occur each year in females, uh, collegiate athletes. We also know that females are four to six times higher uh, than males um, for sustaining ACL tears. Um, and we know that 80% of ACLs tears are sustained uh, from non-contact um, situations. Uh, my disciplinary perspectives that I used, the first one I used was biology. Um, I looked at the anatomy of the body, uh, mostly uh, female, the pelvic girdle. Um, in females, you, we can see that the pelvic girdle is wider for uh, childbearing. Um, so the wider hips creates a greater inward angle on the knees. As we said, you see the knock knees in women. Um, mostly because of the greater angles that we see in their hips. Uh, the second concept I looked at was the musculature, the difference between hamstring and quadriceps string. Hamstrings tend to dominate in male athletes. Uh, the hamstring, when it fires, it pulls that tibia backwards, uh, which balances or stabilizes the ACL. Uh, females, they use their quadriceps more, which pulls that tibia forward, which puts strain on the ACL. The last concept I used was uh, hormones. Uh, I looked at the menstrual cycle for women. Um, during the mid follicle phase uh, is when they have the greatest chance of, uh, chance of sustaining ACL tears. Um, it's due to the increase in estrogen, which plays a role in the fibroblast and the collagen, uh, which increases the laxity of ligaments. Uh, the next discipline I looked at was physics. Um, I looked at the Q angle. Um, as we said, the women have wider set hips. Uh, that Q angle is defined as from the front of the hips down to the knees. And the greater that Q angle, the greater the knees become inward, um, and then the greater strain there's put on the ACL. Uh, also, a greater Q angle is related to knee flexion. Uh, the greater that Q angle, the less knee flexion women are going to get when they land, which creates um, more force in <coughs> the knee. I also looked at torque, uh, mainly tibial torque. Um, if we can think of torque as like a twisting of the tibia, so when athletes are planning and they plant their foot and they turn in another direction, the tibia kind of twists um, when they're not in the proper position, um, like it's an upright position as in what females are in, and that tibia will turn one way, put pressure on the ACL, and it will tear. Uh, the last one I looked at was forces, and I focused on ground reaction force, and this is the force applied to the body from the ground. So women who are in a more <coughs> upright position uh, tend to take the force into the knees, and men who are in a lower position tend to absorb in their hips. So women who absorb in their knees, it tends to put more pressure on their knees. They have a harder landing, and that increases the risk of injury. 
The last discipline I looked at was psychology. I first looked at the stress and pressures that athletes are under. Um, everybody, as a student athlete, you're asked to perform in the classroom and also on the field. So there's a great amount of stress when you're trying to dedicate a huge amount of hours to succeed in the classroom and a significant amount of hours to succeed on the field as well. So there's kind of like an overlapping gap of how much time do I spend on my schoolwork and how much time do I spend um, as an athlete um, to succeed in both areas. I looked at performance measures. Um, this is kind of like that star athlete persona. Um, as a star athlete, if you get put up a certain amount of numbers, you're expected to put those numbers up again um, or even higher the next time. Uh, we see a lot of times with females that they try to compete at the male level. Um, and when they compete at the male level, they tend to push themselves further than what their body can handle. And uh, that's where injuries occur. Um, I looked at a multidisciplinary literature review. Um, here I included journals from Sports Medicine Journal, Clinic of Biomechanics Journal, Journal of Electromyography and Kinesiology, and Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports. My integrative strategies. Uh, the first one I looked at was building complex and multi-causal explanations. Um, for this one, um, a multidisciplinary research was necessary um, involved with ACLs because there's many complex concepts that go into the ACL um, for stabilization of the knee. Um, there's not one concept we can look at, but many that have to be looked at um, to see why females are so prone to ACL tears. The next concept I looked at was bridging the explanation action gap. Um, for this one, uh, we looked at many concepts and disciplines that cause ACL tears in female athletes. Um, and then we took those concepts and um, a prevention program was devised to kind of reduce the causes that we we're seeing in ACL tears. When uh, it came to creating common ground, I used uh, organization. Um, for here that we see that the causes in ACL tears um, can be internal and external. Um, when I talk about internal, I'm looking at the hormones of the body, um, musculature, the difference between hamstring and quadricep strength, and um, I'm also looking at the anatomy. Like I said earlier, the pelvic girdle, increasing the Q angle, increases stress on the knees. Then I look at external factors, um, such as ground reaction force, um, tibial torque, things that take uh, place outside the body that affect how the body's going to react to certain situations and either increase the risk of injury or decrease the risk of injury. Um, we can't look at ACLs as an isolated entity. We have to look at it as a, a continuum almost. So we have to take one concept with another concept, another concept to kind of devise a prevention program that um, targets uh, all positions in the body or all muscles in the body or, or the anatomy of the body. Um, when we come up with the causes, um, the Santa Monica Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Research Foundation um, devised a prevention program called Prevent Injury and Enhance Performance. Um, this program just is a series of drills and agilities that are specific to each sport that are supposed to target the deficits seen in females. So when they look at females having knock knees, then we want to work on the posture when it comes to um, the PEP program. So getting in a nice low knee flex position is where they'd like to see the athletes be. Um, they also look at soft landings. Um, is the back straight? Are the knees over the toes? Um, the biggest thing that we see in this program is that you have to, or what they want to target is uh, correct posture. So all the coaches, um, trainers, that when they're looking, when the athletes are doing this, we want to make sure that they're doing the correct posture. Um, they don't look at how many repetitions are done, but how many correct repetitions are done. With the PE program, we see um, a significant reduction in ACL tears, approximately between 74 and 88 percent reduction in ACL tears after the program has been done. So usually it involves a six-week program at the beginning of the season. Um, it's done three times a week uh, in the beginning of practice. Um, it also increases neuromuscular control, which is um, the athlete's ability to control the body on the field during activity. So when they're performing landing, jumping, deceleration, pivoting, um, how is the body in control? Is the mind able to receive the information and is the body able to perform the correct posture? 
in conclusion, uh, what I'd like to see is for uh, athletes who are starting at the age 12 and up, I'd like to see a program implemented at each level of sports. Uh, if we can start athletes at a younger age um, doing the correct mechanics, uh, body positions as they get older and as the intensity of the sport gets old, uh, increases, uh, then they'll be doing the proper mechanics and we'll see less ACL tears in female athletes. Over here. You know, if you had more time or expertise, do you think there are any other disciplinary perspectives that would be helpful in the, in this study? <clears throat> want to do like the sociology aspect of it, like how their environment around them affects them. Um, you could possibly use other disciplines, but for I wouldn't I wouldn't use any more disciplines than what I have that what I've used. So all right, Linda. Thank you very much. <laughs> 